middle finger. What's when it's like story? you've been high, but have you ever been <laughs> cash eating cake in the bush? Cake eating cake, maybe. yeah, in a bush. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, that's a real picture. I wasn't you sure. Like the party, <laughs> dude. Dude got high. He's he was sober mm. for quite a while, but he's pretty yeah. impish too. There's a lot of video footage of him, like. There's a, there's a, um... I was like, <laughs> it looked like you had some crazy hair for a it's second. It's like his head is positioned right where my fucking head is. I, I need the glasses too. There, uh, there was a, there was a video. Uh, I don't remember what the point of the video was, but anyway, there was a, some video with like some Johnny Cash, like hanging out somewhere on a farm or whatever. And he's like standing there and there's like, I don't know, like some kind of lamb or a donkey or something like some farm animal, you know, like on the fence beside him or whatever. And he just keeps reaching over and like flicking the animal's ear and like pulling the ear and picking on it or whatever. Like June's like, Johnny. yeah, John, what are you doing? Leave him, leave the poor thing alone. And he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like he definitely had like an impish, you know, like fun loving side to him as much as he came off as like this sternly, you know, elderly statesman of country music, you know, <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. He seemed like he was a fun-loving guy. Fun-loving fun-loving criminals. My uh my I think what I'm going to do though is actually I'm going to get like um a, some like record holder things. That, oh yeah. That's ones cool. that just kind of like so I can just like uh fill those in, just rotate some cool records in the background. Sweet. Like full like album covers or just like just the vinyl part? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, album covers. But I don't want ones that are you know, like the frames that lock it in and be like framing. I want ones that are, I can rotate them and just be like, right. Just I found them. They're just in and out. Yeah. Just like, they're just little plastic holders and then I can just lean the album, you know, be like displaying them at a store or something, but sure. put like six across the back there and then I can just rotate different ones in and out all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go with the That's theme of whatever the episode is or whatever. Or whatever, whatever. <laughs> I just think it's cool. Whatever. That's my plan. But in the meantime, I'm like, well, I'm going to put something up in the background to look at. No, it looks good. I'm uh, yeah, except for Johnny's head being cut off, but yeah, I could I could identify ba barely, but I figured it out. I'm going to uh, just quickly smoking. Oh, I've had a, I've had a couple drinks now, so I'm kind of like lost in my computer. <laughs> I'm like, wait, where I'm do lost I keep in this? The supermarket. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, there was a. Uh, I want to welcome you both, Charlie and Quinn, to uh, Dope Nostalgia. Hey, as, as some of you may know, these guys are like my uh, my brothers from another mother podcast. Your pod, your my pod, pod family, my pod. pod fam. That's what I'm saying. I, I thought I'd get out the accordion for this show. <laughs> Can you play the accordion? No, but my grandpa used to play the accordion very well. He used to play it at church, at home. It was cool. It was always too heavy for me. I was like, oh, this thing ugh, knocks me over. <laughs> yeah, they're ridiculous. I have an accordion, not mine. Like, we uh, inherited it. And that's the first thing I noticed about it. I'm like, how can anybody, like, learn to play this? Are there child-sized accordions? There it's must. There's tiny. Are there parlor-sized the accordions? Or do you just get, like, one of those, like, squeeze box things? Like, just do this for now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, there had to have been little ones for sure, at some point. For, know, for, just, for the kids, never, but like I've the never... big size ones. And what are all those little buttons for? Like the little cords. tiny. You see these little buttons cords. right here? Those are chords. So you're holding down a chord, but you're playing a chord on the keyboard part of so, it. So the keyboard part is more a little bit more for riffing. Ah. Oh, okay. And then you can so you can hold down a straight chord, and then do 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 you know do 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 do. That's cool. That's, that actually makes it easier to play than a piano, I would think. Yeah, totally. As long as you can tell what what chord you're looking for, because it's all just like I don't think anything's numbered or labeled on. They the have line. they have little like. Um, what do they have? You know, like how QWERTY okay, yeah. on keyboards has little feely finger things, right? What's a, there's got to be a better way to say feely finger yeah, things. Feely, feely, feely. Finger. feely. There's feely finger things on it. Little little tiny nubs. Little they nubs. Got, do they got little braille markings on them? So you yeah. know what it is. There's like a diamond one, I think, and then there's like a another one that's not a diamond. I don't know what it is. So you know where your finger position is. So you. Go. Well. Like when blind people use an ATM. Getting to know Thanks. your accordion. Gentlemen, I want to thank you for being on the show. 
Uh, this is obviously Dope Nostalgia, which is a podcast that we had Quinn on once, and he really he really brought us a an exciting show with lots of positivity. <laughs> <laughs> I make it my goal in life to go on other people's podcast and bum them out. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, it was a good show because it was a show that needed to be told. It was a story. I've had people actually write me and tell me like they thought it was really cool that we talked about that. Oh well, I think okay. Yeah. So what we're talking about is the um, the gin blossoms mm. and how the story of the gin blossoms is actually very 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 dark and people don't know that. And uh, I, I go back. What episode was it? Do you know off the top of your head? Oh man, that was years ago. Well, no, it felt like it. I, I'd say <laughs> it was. It was before the pandy, before the yeah. before the quar. <laughs> That's right. You were here with me, mm -hmm. weren't you? Okay, in so that studio. was we filmed that in. We filmed that. We recorded that in early March, I think, late yeah. February, early uh, March. But it's an episode all about the Goo Goo Dolls, and yeah, if you don't know the story of the or not Goo Goo Dolls, God the Goo Goo Dolls, a couple drinks in <laughs> the Goo 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 Goo, the the Goo Goo Gin Gin Blossoms, the Gin Blossoms, and yeah, if you don't know the story of the Gin Blossoms, uh, it's a it's a story that needs to be told. I think. Do you like the Goo Goo Dolls? No, I've always thought Johnny Resnick was just a John Bon Jovi wannabe. Oh, I think it's invent, the hair. Didn't he invent Karen hair? Like the can, can I speak to the manager here? <laughs> yes. Like he was the first oh, one to have yeah. that haircut before like John and Kate plus eight came along and was like, Yeah. I hate my husband and I'm mad that I have eight children. She put them streaks in it. He's spending all the money on Ed Hardy t shirts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I I do remember putting that song though on a couple of mi mixtapes though, trying to of course girls back did. in the day. Yeah, it was high school. It was high school. <laughs> Play to the crowd, man. Play to the crowd. Yeah. Listen, we're not here to talk about Johnny Resnick and the Goo Goo Dolls. But you know what's funny? Like, sometimes I feel like uh, I'm an episode of South Park with the Remember Berries. Yeah. Remember when this? Remember that? That's pretty yeah. much what we're doing. You do have a nostalgic yeah. podcast, right? I remember. Yeah. yeah. yeah do you I guys remember, remember when... Uh... I remember. remember the 90s? <laughs> <laughs> the artist who went... The whole damn fucking podcast is Remember Berries. Um... Do you guys remember Polly Shore? <laughs> <laughs> the, the weasel. He's in the juice. Because yeah. <laughs> I'm a stony crusty dude and I got a mop on top. <laughs> Oh man, I like that uh, the one with uh, Fraser in it, Brandon Fraser, that Encino man. That I thought you meant one. Fraser as in like, uh, uh, like from Cheers. Toss salad and Fraser scramble. Frank, yeah. yeah, I'm uh, listening. I'm like, holy shit! Did Polly Shore and uh, what the fuck is his real name? Fraser's I would real love name. that. Brand movie. Brandon Kelsey Fraser. Grammer. Uh, Kelsey Grammer. Yeah, oh, the baby Grammer is Fraser. Yeah. yeah. Could you imagine Kelsey Grammer in Encino Man instead? <laughs> different, totally different movie. And he'd be like. <laughs> Meredith, you cold-hearted bitch. <laughs> well, I can't remember. I'm gonna go live with Lilith. My... Lilith. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was close. Meredith. Uh, yeah. Th you, in it. You, you, you had the right, right idea. Yeah. We're gonna talk about Alfred Matthew Yankovic today. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy! That's what it says on his driver's license, anyway. <laughs> What a guy. Hey, now that guy, he's a legend. He really, truly is. And, yeah. uh, you know, I've, I've put the, uh, the invite out for him to come and be on the show sometime. And, uh, he's probably too busy for the show. He's and got he's a good level of fame. Like he's more famous than Tom Green, who's too busy to be on the show. So <laughs> <laughs> is that some shade? Is that some light shade you're throwing there? You like, never got my email. You know, who's too busy to be on the show, but that's, <laughs> have you, right. that's totally have you asked Polly Shore. That. I haven't asked Polly Shore. Polly Shore is putting out workout videos right now. They're called Sweating with the Wees. <laughs> Shut up. It. I'm not kidding. He Look it up on YouTube. It. He truly embraces it. That's cool. Lean into yeah. it, man. Mm. Lean into it. Yeah, for sure. I'll tell you, everybody I've had on the show, it's been a blessing. It's been an absolute beyond my wildest expectations that they'd even say yes. So mm -hmm. I think it's really cool when they do. And no disrespect to anyone who doesn't have the time to be on the show. I get it. Well, I mean, that's very cool. I, I, I mean, we, we've just started this episode and you're already talking, singing our praises. Like, that's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. for Yeah. Thank you for stopping all your busy things that you're doing. I know so much to do. It's, it's true. It's true. But man, Weird Al Yankovic is somebody that I think we have all known and respected for ages. I don't think anyone could. Have you ever heard anyone say, I hate Weird Al? Hmm. Yeah, but yes, but not anybody I would respect the opinion of. 
Right. I cannot think of a single case in my life where somebody's been like, oh, fuck oh, that silly, now. stupid stuff. You know, God, he makes you maybe giggle. Coolio. <laughs> I think he might be one of the few that were actually offended by Weird Al. Yeah, I know Prince. Yeah. Prince didn't take a shining to Weird Al either. That's Prince, too bad. Prince was actually actually told Weird Al, or his handlers told Weird Al, as they sat even close together at an award ceremony, that he was not to look Prince in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> God, I want to have that kind of. He doesn't like it when people look down on him. Is that what it is? He's a short guy. Everybody looks down on him. Or <laughs> dead. He's dead. Yeah. And guess what? Weird Al's still here. So guess what? Weird Al wins. <laughs> Fuck you, Prince. <laughs> yeah, and he's even produced. He's a music video director too. Like he's not only directed and worked and produced on all of his own stuff, but he's actually made music videos for other artists, including Ben Folds, Hanson, The Black oh. Crows. And the presidents of the United States of America. Now yeah. that band, he that also band. parodied. That's true. Yeah. With Gump. Gump. Gump sat, sat alone on a bench in the park. Yeah, that, <laughs> that was okay. So we're 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 focusing on the '90s records, right? Is we that are. We the absolutely weird are. Albums of the okay, 90s. So where does that start? That starts. We're very with... we're very aware that he his career really fucking hit it in the '80s, mm -hmm. and then he even got on a movie had a movie called UHF. Yeah, his own movie. Yeah, yeah, he didn't yeah. get on it. He right. his his brainchild, I'm sure. Created UHF. It. Which I haven't seen yet and I want to watch him well, haven't seen movies. UHF. I actually want to bring, you know, okay, so people we have like a Friday night bad movie club where we all bring shit movies to the table and we watch them as a group on Zoom. I mean, well, that's the next one I want to bring UHF up. is UHF. not a bad movie. Well, we'll yeah, see that there's a flaw. There's that's a flaw the flaw? Your, yeah, yeah it's not it's a, a shit movie. UH, yeah. UHF is actually a good movie, so. So I better watch it in my own fucking time. <laughs> no, just just hold a different Zoom. You know, just hold a different uh, yeah. uh, just movie. Have a, UHF viewing party. Yeah. yeah, have a actually kind of holds up movie club. <laughs> Do you think UHF holds up? I haven't I seen so. it in a while. Oh, wait, no, there are some parts that won't. <laughs> Okay, that depends on your definition of holds up. I think I know what you mean, Charlie. I think, mm. but you know, like there's like maybe a racial stereotype or two in the movie. Yes. Oh. But they're still funny. Yes. I you could know? never even, we didn't even use the VH, UHF not, on, the, on the fucking dial of the TV. Right. I never even knew what that meant. <laughs> yeah, I had a I had a TV that had a UHF dial on it, and uh, it never picked up anything. So, because with that farmer antenna vision that we had, it was just what is it VHF yeah. that we would get? Yeah, VHF. My grandparents, who gave me the TV, told me it used to get a few things on the UHF channel, but I, I wonder... think it was just like a farm report or something. They were like, nothing really good ever came in on the wheel and of then fish. The crazy thing about the the other dial, the VHF, it only went up to channel twelve. Mm. Thirteen. Nope, no 13. Where are we getting ITV on? Because we got it on 13. I don't know. I was getting it on a, through a VCR that I could get all the channels on. Okay. So is it By the time I had a TV that had dials, like, this was for my bedroom. My grandparents were like, you want this old TV? I was like, yes, it's going to have a TV in my bedroom. I got a TV. <laughs> it's got two dials on it. Click, 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 click. <laughs> was the other one for like, uh, is it kind of like the AM and the FM dial? Is that the whole purpose of UHF versus VHF? I guess so. I think UHF was like reserved for public access and things like that, like it, to appease um, like some regulatory board, I guess, probably in the States, maybe even in Canada mm -hmm. about having access for public broadcasting. So they dedicated the UHF band at the time to that. And that's actually the whole concept of UHF. The movie is that he gets a public access show. Yeah. Oh, and man, I got to tell you, as even even like outside of just that movie, um, if you want to go down an amazingly weird, pleasant rabbit hole, go to YouTube and start searching for public access television shows because really? that was the wild west of TV. You could do anything. <laughs> well, I think this ties nicely into talking about Al in the 90s because I think my biggest exposure to Weird Al as a actual person and not just these nebulous songs that... So, like, I mean, I was w very much aware of Weird Al in the 80s. As a kid, because like on my elementary school, we would pass around, you know, like Weird Al tapes. I think the first one I had uh, that it was a copy. I didn't have the actual cassette. Somebody had like dubbed it for me was Weird Al in 3D. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh. But I had no picture of who this person was in my head until 
he used to take over much music in the 90s. Yeah. Yes. And have Al TV. Al TV. And yes. it would be him doing his parodies. He would do live skits. Mm-hmm. It was like a block of programming. If I remember, it was like a few hours. Yeah. 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 And then they would play it on a loop endlessly for like a weekend. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was like a marathon, Al TV marathon. Totally. Yeah. yeah. And it wouldn't, it was in the air where you could get away with that too. Like, I don't know. I guess some channels still kind of do it. Like TBS will, you know, if they're playing a movie on Friday night. They're playing it like another dozen times. And- if you want to see Fast and the Furious, we've got Fast and the Furious at 4 o'clock. We've also got Fast and the Furious at 6 o'clock, 8 o'clock, and 10 o'clock. Yeah, exactly. If you, <laughs> hey, if you just stumbled into the last half of Shawshank Redemption right now, don't and you're, worry. Stick you're thinking up. to yourself, how did this start? Yeah. How did they get in this mess? As soon as this movie's over, we're going to show it again. How do you end that? How do you end that marathon? What do you go into after that? I don't know what they do. Uh, Shawshank Redemption again. Again. But but yeah, Al TV, like this was a thing he would do in the 90s where, and this is specifically Canadian. This was much music in Canada, not MTV. But he did did do it on MTV. He did it on MTV as well. I never saw the MTV ones though. No, I I never saw them. Because we didn't get MTV up here until the 2000s, I don't think. No, I right. would see MTV back then when I would go visit my grandparents in the country and they had one of those giant satellite dishes. Oh, mm-hmm. The yeah. ones that you had to actually physically move to go get different channels until they put it on a sure. motor and then you could just hit a little button. And went, mm-hmm. They were really ahead of their time. I mean, the 90s. <laughs> I think other people had this. It was a way, but you couldn't get the little satellite yeah, dishes. Yeah, those rabbit yeah, that, ears don't do exist. that shit. Yeah. No, well, that's just it. Yeah, out in the country, you could barely pick up like the two or three channels that came in a little fuzzy anyway. Yeah, but we got, I remember getting much music changing and it changed my fucking life. I think we got much music in like 89, 90, 91, somewhere in there. That's For when we sure. got cable TV. And yeah, Al would come into Toronto and he would get on the much and do his own one on there too. So it was pretty much mirroring what he did in the States, I think. And my favorite part of it was the fake interviews he did. Oh, totally. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. He would just edit together celebrity interviews and things they said and write and make some silly silly questions t- to make the celebrity sound like they were answering him in yeah. an off way oh yeah there was sometimes that he would full-on have the footage of them paused <laughs> yeah, so not gonna like... answer me <laughs> <laughs> yeah just a, a blank look on their face like what is yeah. he even asking me it was beautiful yeah, I think that was my real introduction to Weird Al as an overall, like, yeah. real, a like a human an person, entity. not just a character. Although, yeah, it was was those. I, I look forward to those. I remember they were pretty annual. Like they happened at least once a year. Mm-hmm. I felt like they happened more often. Yeah, I felt like they were like every six months or so, maybe. But I remember getting excited about it. They'd be like, Weird Al is taking over much music. We'd be like, shit, that's what you're doing this weekend, dude. I'm clearing my plans with just watching yeah. much music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll Going to be continue. not... 100% different than most weekends, but with more purpose this time. Well, I, we'll just have to turn the Sega Genesis off a few more that's times right. to watch some more Weird Al, that's all. I bet you can find all kinds of uh, Al TV clips still on YouTube. You can find whole episodes. I, whole still, I still have show. a massive box of VHSs that I've been slowly encoding over the years before they turn to brittle dust. Ooh, and uh, I've got, I've got some Al TVs on there for sure. One yeah. of those drawers back there has is full of VHSs. I don't know if Good, I'm not the only one. Weird Al on there, but there probably is. Um, my my biggest memory of uh, Al TV is that sometimes he would do parodies, like that he would perform live on the on the show, mm-hmm. that weren't ones that were on any of the albums. Mm. So you would get a little special. Like I remember he did "Numb" by U2, but he did it as. <laughs> green eggs and ham i love that so much so they I just did love that so much yeah so they just like they just had and this is around the time they're looking for the unabomber i won't put on eat the... it on a plane i won't eat it on the train <laughs> he put on he he, he put on a, a toque and pulled up a hoodie to look like uh you know the edge in the video for numb and then somebody put that picture of the unabomber bomber beside him or something in my memory that's how it worked anyway they were like yeah. yeah 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 and then he started singing like yeah i do not like them on a train i do yeah i do not like green eggs and ham i do not like them sam i am and then somebody came in like bono and went like green eggs and ham oh yeah 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 his brain is just full of fucked up, wonderful ideas. But the thing is, he's never been an offensive person. And that's nice, too. I mean, you said the Unabomber actually surprised me, but like, uh, 
<laughs> it's never it's never like he doesn't do this stuff in a hurtful way never does and i yeah. think that most artists take it as a tribute yeah if weird oh, al wants okay. to do your song you you're like it's like a i've made passage. it yeah but just look up that picture of that wanted picture that that drawing of the unabomber <laughs> and tell me it, doesn't it looks look like, like kenny from south park you know <laughs> I don't know. I'm just. I don't even know what the Unabomber looks like. I'm picturing a guy. In well, a, he doesn't like look with, like where it's broad, drawn all tight, like Kenny. If you guys can. Oh no, that didn't work. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> the editing on this podcast. Wow. There's no editing. There it is. Oh, it is. Oh. <laughs> it looks like mm-hmm. Weird Al. That's what the sunglasses oh. and hoodie. <laughs> it's because of the shape of the glasses and the curly hair. That's it. And the mustache. The mustache okay, so everything. Now. It's yeah, a basically yeah. just it, it's it, basically it, Weird Al. Yeah, yeah, Weird Al's the Unabomber. You didn't know. I think the first <laughs> time I ever heard anything about Weird Al was I heard the lyrics: "Put your head in the microwave and give yourself a tan. Dare to be stupid." <laughs> See, now you're going back to that's the '80s. Mm. Um, but I think that's where it started. What about you, Charlie? Okay, so Quinn, you said that they were you were passing around tapes in the '80s of Weird yeah. Al. Mm-hmm. Were they? popular like were, were were they socially accepted at the time well like, okay that, like weird al okay so mm-hmm. going back to when we were mentioning uh listening to heavy music uh on l2l <clears throat> uh a little, to listen little plug for a learning to listen podcast um <laughs> i remember the the my earliest 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 memory of weird al is the song nature trail to hell <laughs> And a friend of mine played that for me on a cassette as like this secret, like heavy, dirty, like you have to hear this. And I was like, okay. And he had like a Walkman and we're like in the playground. I'm like, I remember this clear as day. And I put like these little headphones on and he hit play and he's like, eyes are wide or whatever. And it's all, you know, about like, you know, there's a Boy Scout troop and a couple of them get murdered in every scene. And I can't remember what the lyrics are anyway, but like, and he's like, that fucking crazy like he was saying it to me like <laughs> not funny like this is dark this, this is heavy insane. and i was like what is this and he's like it's this guy he like weird al he like makes these like really heavy dark songs <laughs> that was my what? Weird wow. al. <laughs> what? we were kids we were children we didn't know that sounded like a heavy song you got a real uh, a real uh, change there when you when you actually listen to more of them then for sure. <laughs> well, that's what it was. Then I remember tr- like being like, "Whoa, do you have more of those?" And he's like, "I'll make you a tape." Awesome. And then I got my copy because that was on Weird Al in 3D, mm-hmm. and he gave me my copy. And I it, it must have been on just like the worst, cheapest. Like he probably held like a <laughs> microphone from a my first Sony thing or whatever to like a speaker or whatever, and it sounded like shit, but. I love that. I'm trying to remember what the track listing would have been on uh, on that. It was so long ago. Yeah, you should. You should. I'll look it up. That. But anyway, Charlie. Uh, okay, so what, the reason I asked that because I was wondering because I was the kid uh, in school on the school bus with Weird Al tapes in my Walkman too. Uh, except I don't feel like I don't remember recall that as being the very a very popular choice at the time, mm-hmm. right? Like it's some definite vindication came in the 90s when he you know it was a lot more mainstream and he's taken over much music and he's taken over mtv and everybody's you know everybody's into it but at the time i was you know it wasn't the cool accepted music right so i remember doing that and uh, i definitely got into it that's actually how i think i got into a lot of more mainstream popular music like by by stuff like queen and then things like that because the first time i probably i i think that i'm sure i heard them on the radio but the first time i really paid attention to it would have been weird al's versions of the song right mm. so that would have influenced me a lot to be a, a, enough to the point where i'm like oh i should check out this band or i should check out you know whatever this band or this band yeah. um and then and then uh so so that was always with me i had i had most I, i'm pretty sure i had all of his 80s stuff on 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 tape uh but then fast forward to the 90s um and al palooza came out it wasn't his first album in the 90s uh the first album was off the deep end Yes. But, uh and that was a huge one for him, right? That like brought him into the nineties firmly with like Nirvana covers and stuff like that. Huge. But, yeah, totally huge for him. And then funny enough, Alapalooza came out second, which we, we had the, the Jurassic Park cover 
Right. All the dinosaurs are running wild. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and we kind of talked about it a little bit in the last Learning to Listen podcast we just recorded. But my first huge concert that I remember going to was I got my dad to bring to take me to the Alcan tour, which was the the Canadian tour for Alapalooza in 95. Uh, and it was at the Jubilee Auditorium and it had... Like it had almost all the '90s stuff in it, and I got one of those Alapalooza hats, and I wore that. I wore I wore that into the into the dirt, basically. I wore that into <laughs> dust. You so. really, really loved him. I like. Oh, I was him. huge into him. Yeah, for sure. Um, I definitely went through some stages where I came back around, probably around Alapalooza. Mm -hmm. So as a kid, like I said, that my introduction to Weird Al was firmly with Nature Trail to Hell and my friend being like, this song is so dark and heavy or whatever. And <laughs> anyway, you know, because he's just talking about murder on it. Whatever, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's like bring the whole family. We feel like the six o'clock news. You know? mm -hmm. Anyway, but then I'm, now I'm looking at the track list and I'm like, oh, yeah, it's all coming back to me now. Like the very first track. Now, I would have definitely been aware of Michael Jackson as a, a kid at that age. Because, mm -hmm. you know, he was the biggest thing in the world. There's no way he would. Sure. But I remember that I knew the words to eat it mm -hmm. way better than I knew the words to this day. I, you know, like every, if, if beat it comes on, if I hear the song beat it, I start in mm -hmm. my head going, how oh, come you're always <laughs> such a fussy young man? Don't, Don't want, want no Captain Crash. Don't want no reason, Ben. <laughs> yeah. I know the Weird Al lyrics are better. Like, yeah, this yeah. is, uh, for this me, is that, where, for that, me, this that's is right along album. with uh, that's right along with another one rides the bus for me. You know, like yes. I, I, just, I know those lyrics more than I know another one bites the dust. Yes. Oh God, I know theme. You know the theme from Rocky. <laughs> Every time I watch Rocky, I hear it's the Rye or the Kaiser. It's the hundred percent one bite. 100%. May I please help you choose an appetizer? <laughs> Don't go near the tuna. It smells funny tonight, but you just can't go wrong with the Rye do -do 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 or the Kaiser. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's so funny. What is with it? him and food? It's just amazing. Like it's mostly eighties where he was into doing the food songs. No, but in the nineties, just eighties compilation of his all his songs about food called the Food Album. Oh. There was the Food Album, yeah, yeah. But I think what happened uh, was I had this record, and then it wasn't much of a big follow up on that. And then I was aware of like uh, his parody of um, Nevermind or mm. of uh, smells, smells like, smells like Teen Spirit. His smells like Nirvana or whatever. <laughs> but you're right. It was definitely Alapalooza coming out. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, that album really hit with the kids. By this time, I'm in junior high. Yeah. And that album hit with the kids in my junior high. And everybody was playing uh, Alapalooza. And I, it only dawned on me fairly recently that... Um, his, the, his Jurassic Park is frightening in the dark. Yeah, it's actually a mashup of two songs. What else is it besides MacArthur Park? Live and Let Die. Oh yeah, there's that part in it. Da da da, ba da da, ba da. I forgot about that part. It's not. Yeah, it's I don't not even that's... a lyrical. It's not even lyrically. Uh, it's, it's just the parody. He just goes part? into Live and Let Die in the <laughs> middle of Jurassic Park on that song. How random. Yeah, I love that. I, I mean, I know that like because years later when I because I, I think Jurassic like I never heard the song at that point MacArthur Park. Right. Me neither. The original. No. Until I heard that, and it wasn't until years later when I'm you know going down musical rabbit holes and I'm discovering that oh, what a weird song that turned out to be such a pop standard for a while in the '60s. Like everybody covered yeah. MacArthur Park, and it's all about like the sweet like green ice sing like dripping down or whatever it sounds like a weird al parody i honestly never even knew that was a parody of another song i just thought it was a weird <laughs> al original i was like oh and this proves my chaos theory and i'm never <laughs> coming back this way again yeah but if you look at the know. lyrics i'm gonna look up the lyrics of the original yeah. macarthur park well, and it's funny. Like, i don't even care about the original the jurassic park's so good it's funny because a lot of a lot of the time, so you know, he's picking songs that are current, right? He's picking mm -hmm. songs like Nirvana in the '90s, right? He's picking, yeah. uh, he's doing like uh, "Under the Bridge" by the Chili Peppers and "Give It Away," right? But oh, then the he Bedrock picked, Anthem, yeah, Bedrock Anthem, and then he picks he picks Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park is the current reference, yes. Point. And then he picks a song from the '60s, <laughs> you know. So that's kind of cool. 
very much. And then so. he picks, and then he picks. Uh, you know that. Okay, ending. here are the lyrics to the original MacArthur Park. Okay. Um, I'll just do the chorus. MacArthur's Park is melting in the dark. All the sweet green icing flowing down. Someone left the cake out in the rain. I don't think that I can take it because it took so long to bake it, and I'll never have that recipe again. That sounds like a Weird Al parody. It's like he re- it's like he reversed the song. He uh, he, he un- un- Weird Al it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He made it a more serious song than it was. <laughs> he made it about dinosaurs and shit. Mm-hmm. Well, what about the uh, my my this year mannequin guy? Okay, that's so that's the that's saga. The, that's a little bit further on, right? That's the yeah. yeah. So let's let's focus on Weird Al in the nineties for sure. Yeah. Right. So it does start with the off the deep end. Yeah. I thought that um, was the 90s. Yeah, off the deep end was the first oh, one. Oh, my favorite on off the deep end is the white stuff. Yeah, which because of being a new kids fan, like a, oh, oh 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 in the middle of oh, an Oreo. Oreo. In the middle, the white stuff. <laughs> See, and then that was also, a simple one. I and like then it. also uh, uh two tracks later on that one, Taco Grande. Yes. See now I became more familiar with some of the stuff on this album. I like because it. of the, the food album compilation. Like I know mm. about uh, the white stuff and Taco Grande. And then the last track on this album is the oh, Weird Al original. Amazing. Good, you original. Don't Love Me Anymore. And so I didn't good. know about that song until it came out on a, uh, he might've played it on like a, a an Al TV. He but did. I think he was promoting one of his greatest hits albums, like volume two or something at the time. Yeah. And he had a video for it at that time. Mm. It's it's the more than words video by extreme. That's the video for <laughs> you don't love me anymore with Robert Goulet as the janitor. Goulet. Goulet. Now you don't Goulet. love me anymore. Something I'll bust out a karaoke once in the blue moon. You That's- slam my face down on the barbecue grill. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are the what's the line about? Uh... Uh, you set my house on, on fire. fire. Then you pulled, pulled out, out my chest hairs with an old, old pair, pair of pliers. <laughs> it's beautifully written. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, now so I am. I, I think he might have won a Grammy. Well, he's won Grammys. He's won Grammys. I don't know if it was that one, but well, damn. yeah, he handed out a Grammy with uh, Coolio. With Coolio. <laughs> Did they I'm make a- up? I, heard I don't know that, if they've ever yeah. made up, but here's the thing is now he's always said that he has always gotten express permission from the artists yep. to parody their songs. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like from very early on or something like that. I think maybe one of the first times somebody, he got like some bad feedback where he, and he felt bad about it. And he was even, like from now on. Even oh. when he doesn't need to, he doesn't need to get permission no. from the artist as long as it's from the writer. Right. And he credits the writer. Yeah. So right, anyway. but I think either way, he's always been like, "Look, been... I just I try and make sure that it's cool with everybody involved." And so mm-hmm. apparently, Coolio signed off on him parodying "Gangsters Paradise," and I, I think where Weird Al crossed the line was he also parodied Coolio personally by like make, like doing Coolio's hair, and he yeah. showed up at the Grammys with like Coolio's hair, oh. and Coolio was like. The fuck is this bullshit, man? Like Coolio takes himself seriously. Well, yeah. I know, what a little bitch. Well, sorry, yeah. Coolio. I, have to <laughs> I know. Coolio is also declined to come on uh, Dope Nostalgia. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Oh man, and he was so slamming in the nineties too. Come One, two, three, around. four. No, no, no. Before that, Fantastic Voyage, which I know is uh, that's like the most obvious uh, sample from. Fantastic Voyage. It's even called Fantastic Voyage. <laughs> Gangsta's Paradise is one of the greatest rap songs at the time, and I didn't even realize it was a Stevie Wonder song. So honestly, Pastime Paradise. That would have yeah, did yeah. Stevie get consulted? Probably too. Hey, I bet he did. I bet Al would have reached out to Stevie, but who knows? I think once these guys had to start crediting their samples and like the original artists and whatever, and royalty started coming in for these mm-hmm. guys. They were like, like, like uh, with MC Hammer's like "Can't Touch This," which mm-hmm. is obviously like "Brick House" or not "Brick House," uh, "Super Freak." Yeah. Yeah, 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 right. You know, I remember the, there's somebody who said like, um, you know, like at first Rick James was like fucking MC Hammer who or whatever, and then he started getting all these checks coming in, and he's like fucking cover them all, MC them Hammer all, all day long, sample every single one, whatever you need, man. Here you go. I haven't made this much money in like a decade. <laughs> But uh, I wonder if with Weird Al, how many of the credits go to? Because they're parodies, so do they technically 
like do they does he have to are there any royalties for the original what's the copyright like with a parody Hmm. well as far as i know if you're doing a cover you don't even have to ask for permission as long as the songwriters are credited and included so that they make the money right Right. but they're still licensing you still have to have the uh, the go-ahead to release and you know make money on that's definitely when you what you want to do so you cover all your bases but uh i don't know i think if you just there's a big difference between that and just outright doing the blurred lines thing and you know ripping off the whole damn song and then claiming you wrote it right and yeah you're gonna get sued well yeah that's what i mean like i'm weird i would not have a career if he's been sued over and over again Mm -hmm. right well, he so, does everything in a tasteful, respectful manner, and I think that's one of the reasons he's so well loved. Yeah, so I'm just wondering what the legalities are there with his like parodies, like how much, because like man, if every song, okay, that's the thing is he does have a ton of original material too. Mm-hmm. Every record has like a third of the album is something that he wrote. You know, yeah. Like, I'm a big look. Speaking of Alapalooza, you know, I'm a big like you know Frank's 2000 inch TV, uh, Harvey the Wonder Hamster. Nice. You know, I, those are some of my favorite tracks on the, on that album. You know, yeah. like I like the Weird Al stuff. I gotta say, I, yeah, you know, he had three original tracks on that one. I'm saying that's what I'm saying. I'm, I feel like his original material is a little underappreciated. He's actually a pretty good like. Yeah, pretty, I think so. Um, funny well, on okay, his own. First right? off, you have to be you clever. Can have a career. Yeah, you have to be clever enough to think of the, to have to come up with these parodies in the first place obviously there's something there you can you can do a couple of original songs right like for mm-hmm. sure it's all yeah there's so many there's at least three original songs on every one and there's always although it's parody a polka song on every album a polka medley once one once upon a time i had an mp3 playlist that was every polka medley from every weird al <laughs> Album. Oh, now, how many polka medleys does he have? It is it, it just they about go back one to like, every album. Yeah, I think he's put in the eighties. Yeah, in the eighties he did them too. Yeah. Um, now, I here's the thing though: the one that isn't a medley is the one on Alapalooza. Mm-hmm. That one's a straight up cover. Oh, that one's just um, Bohemian, Bohemian Rhapsody. Polka. Yeah. Oh yeah, because yeah, you can't ma- you can't mash that one. No, you can't. <laughs> you can't just take a snippet. You gotta take. You could. Thing. You could just do like whatever. But he decided to do the whole song. That song is already like a fucking adventure and different <laughs> things happening. You can't really mash it any more than it yeah. is. Yeah. See. Okay. Now. Yeah. Here's the f- funny thing. Now. Now that I'm looking at the track listing and I'm seeing the writers listed, uh, some of them that are straight up parodies just list him as a writer yankovic and other ones like bedrock anthem list anthony kiedis john frusciante mm-hmm. yeah yeah so, i guess it depends on how close to the actual original song it is you know because there's somewhere it's in the style of they might be giants or something but it's not a legitimate parody of a very specific song you know what i mean look at something like the one he did of sledgehammer <laughs> Where it's not outright sledgehammer, but it, it uses some of the sounds that are in sledgehammer, like Woo, like that whistle sound tone that's in that. Is that that must be Waffle King, hey? Yeah, yeah it's that's Waffle, Waffle King. King. Like would that literally That one says get, style parody. Yeah. That's a style parody. That's not a literal ripoff of Peter Gabriel. Yeah, it's not a specific song. It's just a song referencing his songs. Peter Peter Gabriel's mm. songs. Yeah, like this is interesting. For Jurassic Park, he uh lists Jimmy Webb who wrote MacArthur Park. Mm. as a songwriter but he doesn't mm. list uh oh i don't know this is weird okay so jimmy webb must have had, was a co-writer on macarthur park and then there was also richard harris I was richard know. harris the original richard uh, harris maybe former people who performed yeah i would MacArthur i would guess it, it would, so he would be the performer that he that weird al took the styling of that yeah, but, but that's weird because he's only one of so many people that covered that song and yeah. i wouldn't say that his version sounds any more like richard harris than it does like any of the other version but then, then there's here there's no mention of wings or paul mccartney here in 2000 red hot chili peppers bassist flea told behind the music that he was unimpressed and disappointed by yankovic's 1993 song bedrock anthem oh, which on. parodied the two of the band songs he was quoted as stating i didn't think it was very good I enjoy Weird Al's things, but I found it unimaginative. Oh, you're crazy. Shut you up, bitch. <laughs> yeah, Flea. Yeah, Flea, Flea thinks too much of himself. 
What else would you do for that? Give it away, give it away. Of course, you're going to do yabby dabba do. Fuck off. <laughs> dabba do now. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Achy breaky song. Yeah, there's there's been a few artists that have turned him down. Okay, so we're all, we're, it seems like we're all super familiar with Alapalooza. Yeah. I want to move on a little bit because I'm like, by the time Bad Hair Day came out in 1996, mm-hmm. I was definitely aware of it, but it wasn't something I was like, you're like, oh, I got to get that new Weird Al album. You know, me and, <laughs> me and my friends, we're just going to sit around <laughs> and hit the bong. and You know, he, you were starting to like your balls drop. Things had changed. Yeah, things had changed. Things yeah, are yeah. moving on in life. Moved on. However, for me, I that, that was probably the last Weird Al album that I was like, oh, I got to get this. You know, oh, another Weird Al album. Of course, I'll yeah. get it. Right. But I think that was the last one. The one after Running With Scissors, the the last one of the 90s was one that I'm I'm familiar with the bigger you know, the stuff that got played around, but like, yeah. well, cause I'm looking at this track list right now and obviously Amish paradise. Yeah. For we sure. all know that. Yeah. But I don't recognize any of these, uh, gum. alternative pope. Gum. I do know and gum. Oh, yeah. I know, but that's it. Phony calls was waterfalls by TLC. Yeah. I don't remember that one. Either. Oh, that's, that's a little weak. I think I feel Syndic- like it, it syndicated incorporated was, yeah, was misery by soul asylum. That was, right. that was a good one. I like that one. Is it good? So I mean, doesn't, like just title alone, just judging by title alone, that doesn't seem that clever. Kated Incorporate. I mean, yeah, I liked it. Uh, Cavity Search is Hold Me, Thrill Me, Kiss Me, Kill Me by you too, <laughs> which is actually, I, I need to listen to that because I don't remember that huh. at all. Yeah, uh, I might have to give it That's my favorite U2 song because I'm not a U2 it, fan a, at all. It's an amazing song. Yeah. I really like that tune. So I'm sure mm. he did. I'm sure he did great things with it. <laughs> interesting okay i'm there's gonna not move even, on there's not even a food song on this album is there yeah it feels like an also you know what that's right? true it's like there a little uninspired more. weird L album yeah i mean he's got the alternative polka which yeah. is nice another polka yeah. yeah but i guess amish paradise yeah. really it had legs it traveled i people even do that yeah. when a karaoke over gangster's paradise huh? still every time that one yeah. in gump because gump definitely had a video as well yeah but i don't think it ever overshadowed the original you know, that's the thing is I measure my Weird Al by if 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 culturally one of these things is referenced or I hear a song on the radio or something like that. If I hear Lump, I think a Lump. I don't go, sure. he's Gump, he's Gump. Yeah. You know? Although it, no, that's not totally true. I always at least think of that one line. His girlfriend, Jenny, was kind <laughs> of a slut. <laughs> <laughs> Went to the White House, showed LBJ his butt. That's right. That's how that finishes. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe that's a little half and half. But there. but what I get what you're saying for sure. There's definitely a lot less of it. There's like two mm-hmm. songs on this album as opposed to like half of the album, if not more. You know. Well, okay. What about uh, Running with Scissors? How He's, does that one? Running, running with, with scissors, scissors. He'd stopped wearing glasses around this time because he is got eye surgery. Had, is this around the time he also shaved his mustache? Yeah. On the cover, he's just wearing like he looks like Bruce Jenner actually. On the cover, he actually looks like Bruce Jenner now. <laughs> he looks like Caitlyn Jenner. You mean? Did That's you just what I mean. Dead, did you just dead name Caitlyn Jenner? No, I meant I meant he, shame. Naomi I meant Caitlyn. He, I meant canceled. I meant Caitlyn now. <laughs> um, he does look like Caitlyn Jenner now. I, did you guys miss Weird Al's mustache? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I, time, I really do. Every time I see a picture of him now, I'm just like, it's, something's missing, man, and it's. Like you can have your hair as long and silky and you know and ringlet like whatever as you like, but is it natural? Is it a perm? What do you think? He's getting up there. I I'll bet you there's a little just for men and, and he's definitely and... touching up his roots, isn't he? he must <laughs> be. He's sixty one. Yeah, he's he's not a spring chicken anymore. You know. Yeah, he's got to have gray hair now. But why why let go of the mustache? The mustache was such a signature look. You yeah. could call it iconic. Yeah. But I definitely hear my, my, this okay. year American guy every yeah, time so, I think of that song. So if we're talking running with scissors, there was at least, just looking at the track list, there's three singles, well, there's three tracks off of it that I still, that I would think of nowadays, right? Like, because Sega Begins, yeah, American Pie, uh, Pretty Fly for a Rabbi, I remember that a lot. And it's all about the Pentiums. Those are the big three. It's all about the Pentiums is my favorite. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, I do remember <laughs> it's all about the Pentiums. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Sega Begins. But other than that, I'm I'm kind of lost on this one too. Sega Begins is interesting because it he was approached to do that as like a promotional tool for oh, episode really? one. 
Did yeah. George Lucas do come to him? Well, I mean, or somebody I that like <laughs> Lucas Films came to him and said, um, "Hi, Weird Al. Um, you want to come yeah. hang out at Skywalker Ranch?" Because he, he, how else would he? Because he this this was released. When did this come out exactly? I think it Nine. June twenty ninth, nineteen ninety nine. Okay. Yeah, right around the exact same time, like Star, Star Wars, Wars was released in the summer too. So it's the plot to uh, Episode One. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that he was given, in advance, he was given a script of Phantom Menace. Could you imagine, though, reading did, that and being did. like, uh, this is what it's going to be? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to pay me a lot of money, right? Okay, well, I'll come up with something. <laughs> now, do you think, yeah, do you yeah. think that they were just like, here's the plot, find a parody? Or do you, th do you think they had suggestions? Do you think they, they the execs had notes? They were like... I'm not saying use American Pie by Don McLean, but yeah. let me just put go into George Lucas mode now, and he'll be like, um, "It's going to be the modern Trump. American epic," and um, so maybe you could find a song that is an American epic, American Pie. It's American, and it's <laughs> what's more American epic. than American Pie? And just pretend you're Obi Wan Kenobi, and just <laughs> just give it, give it all you got. My but you know, you you do you, but you do um, you, right? I don't think I don't think this song overtakes the original, like American Pie by Don McLean. But I do know from being bored listening to American Pie, <laughs> my brain will eventually go there. It's a happy, it's a happy, uh, yeah. Stop around over. around the time where he makes the like goes back to like uh, the like the tempo drops again in that song, and it's like blah blah blah, and I'm like, oh god, the song's still going. That's where I start singing to myself, <laughs> and I was singing, my, my, this here Anakin guy. Maybe hey. Vader someday later, but he's still a small fry. He kissed his, or whatever it is, I can't remember. And kissed his mommy goodbye. Saying and soon I'm soon gonna be a, a Jedi. Jedi. <laughs> Good job, weirdo. On. Uh, so Yankovic, according to Wikipedia, had approached Lucasfilm about the prospect of an advanced screening to ensure that his lyrics were accurate, but the company declined. <laughs> oh, no, we can't. We can't. Uh... So he only had the script to go off of. I don't even know if he had that. It doesn't even say well, he that. He had to. Uh, he originally, he, oh, he yeah. wanted to do a song about the Phantom Menace. It doesn't say that he was approached. It says that he was going to do Pretty Fly for a Jedi. And mm -hmm. then dismiss, dismiss the idea, saying he wanted to parody a classic song to commemorate how important the new movie was considered. So yeah, that's but a good he, thing. It was Weird, Weird Al's idea. Well, it, we, oh. whosever idea it was, he definitely had uh, access to the script. Because of the timing? major plot elements. Because mm -hmm. there's other, absolutely no way. Like, he nails it. Like, he sings the plot to the movie <laughs> yeah, <I did. laughs> you know just, he didn't guess, guess. Yeah. i'm just guessing i'm just guessing oh shit yeah. guys we got lucky yeah like what are the lyrics how to... do you know about jar jar i don't fucking know i just thought there'd be this idiot character named jar jar it's fine okay yeah like he just guessed about like the trade federation and the blockades and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah Naboo, he knows the name Naboo, was under attack, and I thought me and Qui-Gon Jinn could talk the Federation into maybe cutting them a little slack. But their response didn't thrill us. They locked the doors and tried to kill us. We escaped from that cast, then met Jar Jar in Boss Nass. Yeah, like, yeah, that's the script. <laughs> that's exactly up. how the movie goes. Actually, he, it's probably one of the up, easiest... He gets up you and McGregor, he's like, hey, can I have that? I don't know. No, it was probably very closely guarded, so... He... He would have had to ask for a copy. He went to you and McGregor and was like, hey, are you done with that? <laughs> <laughs> you going to finish that? He stole it from you and McGregor's hotel room. He's like, <laughs> thank you and McGregor. He's Thanks, like, you and McGregor. Here, Thanks. send him all this, send him all this turkey. <laughs> <laughs> and in about an hour and a half, I'm going to go and sneak into his room and get my hands on a copy of The Phantom Menace. <laughs> I really want to make a polka playlist now. I'm really inspired to do that. Oh, man, it's great. They're going to be all over uh, Spotify for sure, right? Pretty sure, yeah. I wonder mm. if our our friends in Millennia have ever done any Weird Al polka. <clears throat> if they haven't, they're fools. That's right. We they're missing out. We should really ask them that. What if they're like, that's a little bit beneath us, Naomi. Uh, <laughs> oh, we take no! ourselves 
seriously? And then you have to go like, you guys know you're playing polka, right? So cool. (laughs) So cool. And the thing about those polkas is there was always so much there. He's doing like a dozen pop culture songs. Actually, I found this today when I was kind of like just refreshing my memory about what was going on in the 90s with Weird Al. Mm -hmm. Um, But I found out, uh, I found a, a YouTube like right on his in his on his main youtube page there's a video of him going out in 2018 and doing like i i think it's like a 76 show tour and every night of the tour he played a song that was a straight up cover whether it's like should i stay or should i go um beat on the brat he played it straight really he picked he picked a different song every single show and did the whole song like you can't like you can't you you can't look at that and be all like i don't know if this guy likes music he just likes to make fun of him (laughs) he's obviously he's he's a complete artist he really well early on in his career before he got known for the parodies i mean okay so his career got launched through like the dr demento demento radio show and it was his cover of another one well another one bites the dust where he did another one one rides rides the bus but he was just doing it just him in an accordion. But at that point, too, he wouldn't just parody songs. He would just – the novelty of, of Weird Al was that he was doing hit pop songs of the day mm-hmm. on an accordion, mm-hmm. you know? So, yeah, he would just do, like – I don't know what mm-hmm. else he would do at the time, but, like, you know, like just – an, like an accordion cover of a song but it's i think when a parody took off it's like that kind of was the thing that cemented like, oh. his career <laughs> this it was like oh different. they respond yeah. to that okay here you go here's more parodies here's well, what you like, like here's what a you surgeon like. yeah yeah sure. yeah i don't know okay so i think i'm gonna teach my child's that all the Weird Al songs of like versions of songs are the original versions of songs. <laughs> yes. And that he's the most prolific artist of all time that everybody else has been ripping off or copying. It's like, oh no, no, that's a Weird Al song. That's mm-hmm. a Weird Al song. They just changed the lyrics so people would take them a little more seriously. But you know, they all the Weird Al versions of songs. So they go to a party someday, and then like you know, somebody throws on like some Michael Jackson or whatever, and they start singing like, "Cause I'm fat, I'm fat," you know it. <laughs> Eat it. <laughs> oh hey, this, Weird Al's got some uh, problematic language. He's got more chins than Chinatown. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah. I think it'd be cool to uh, have him on the show, but like fake the interview, like he's faked the interview, like. Weird Al, like, Weird Al. Yeah, I should Weird Al him. <laughs> Al TV him. <laughs> I, feel yeah. like, I feel like that's pretty much the way a lot of those, um, a lot of entertainment uh, journalism, you know, like these parody news shows, like uh, the oh, Dave sure. show, and what that's pretty much the way they've gone. They 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 manipulate a little bit more to make it seem a little more legit, but you know they they, they do a lot of editing to make people look pretty awful sometimes totally. you know, at least weird al was still just purely doing it as a joke and it was obviously as a joke these guys will like really make you think that somebody really has a shitty opinion or is a bad person and you know like jokes on them because they're so out to lunch or whatever but it really is just the tricks of editing or whatever here's the thing he's never ever released things that were offensive or rude or meant to really hurt people i think that it's pretty generally innocent for the most part Right. And I think that like this is the type of thing that I had no problem showing my ten year old niece and seeing if she'd make her laugh a little bit to mm-hmm. hear a song about like like bread or eat it or whatever you know whatever food song I think she'd get a good giggle out of it and I think it's a really cool thing that he's gonna leave a legacy for you know like it's 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 good it's good for kids and families and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, wholesome it's, entertainment. It's good, clean, wholesome family. See, it's good. It's uh-huh. good because when I went to the uh the Alcan tour in '95, um, my dad was forced to take me. Uh, he was not a Weird Al fan. He does not. He's to this day is not a. But I mean, uh, and I Your just mom was like, just take the boy. You'll you got to take him to the concert that he likes. Mm. You got to get. You got to take it to the show or whatever. But um, there's things like when he he was he, he's still playing the basis of Money for Nothing but he's turned it into the Beverly Hillbillies, right? Like, Mm -hmm. so there's still a popular song part of it. Look at that, look at that. Yeah, right? So there's still still that part where I'm I'm hoping that he's still got some enjoyment from that part of it, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, 
Okay. Um, I did see Weird Al live in concert uh, not that long ago, maybe 10 years ago ish. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. was so he came through K Days? He, he always plays the Jube, right? Isn't that just... well? This time it was uh, K Days. The reason I went, like, because oh, no I. Way. He's never been enough of a, like, I'm going to go pay money to go see Weird Al, like, play the Jube or something. Yeah. Right? I'm not paying a 50, 60 plus ticket to see Weird Al. I don't know what they would be, but uh, probably more. But, uh, yeah, probably 50 ish. But the price of admission to Klondike Days, to K Days, to the exhibition, to the fair, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, where I could get a Weird Al concert also. Mm -hmm. And actually be in a beer garden and watch Weird Al. Of course, I went to that. Oh man, that sounds like paradise. That was that's the second time that I saw him was then. Yeah, yeah. and it was great. Oh, I, okay, I've got to say, man, the guy puts on a show. Not only does he play all these songs that, yeah, a they're based on hits. So even if you don't know his parody version, you're like you're getting the greatest hits out. It's a it's like an amazing KTEL compilation of all the best oh. songs ever put out ever. Like you know all of them. They're all earworms. They're all like and and in a live concert, of course, he's carefully handpicked a bunch of songs that are all good you know it's yeah. like it's not the other ran b-side like right. you know like fillers and tracks it's like all killer yeah it's it's like here's eat it you know here yeah. he's done so like many now that yeah he's yeah, got yeah. plenty of material but every song every song and he did a few originals too there was like a costume change there was a set change it was like it was it was live theater but like almost as good as i've seen it any other band pull it off huh. um yeah you know like there would be a backdrop that would have something to do with the song he was doing when he did like when he did fat he came out in a fat suit fat suit yeah both you times know? i've seen him he came out in the fat suit each time it's yeah. amazing yeah, and it's just one of those like you know they, there's a little fan on it that like inflates or whatever but like he oh, one of those. Off. Those are fun. Yeah, but he just be like he changes costumes more often and faster than Cher has ever done in her <laughs> entire career. He must have done it like if he played, I don't know, um, God, twenty some songs in a in a in a concert. He mm -hmm. probably changed at least fourteen, sixteen times. Yeah, for and sure. He would run off stage like at the very end of a song. People are applauding or whatever. You know, he's got enough time to be like, "Thank you," and he's like off stage left or stage right or whatever. And by the time it's the band is about like, you know, into the first verse, he's back on that microphone in a new costume. The backdrop is different. Maybe even some of the stage, like, you know, the band or whatever is even like change costume slightly. However, whatever, like take a pair of sunglasses off and put a hat on. But like they do something, you know, and it's like there it's like it goes from like you hear the first like few refrains of like bam, 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 bam. he's only been off stage that long. Mm -hmm. He comes back around on the other side and he's in a red leather, you know, Michael Jackson suit with one glove on and his hair curled somehow, Nice, you know, with like the Jerry curl hanging down going like, how come you always oh, such a fussy young man? You're like, how the fuck did he do that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember. Uh, yeah, totally. He was definitely very speedy at that, but I do remember they had some, uh, they showed a couple of the video interludes too, where they would. Yeah. To kill a little extra time. It. Yeah, maybe he had an extra complicated. Maybe it's tougher to get in the fat suit or whatever, right? So they they bought him a minute or two doing that, right? But still, that that much costume changing, and never mind like when we we who all play in bands and have run around the stage wearing one outfit, uh, you're yeah. fucking tired by the end of one show, you know, like by the end of one set. Never mind. Yeah. running around and then changing costumes almost every or every other song or whatever it is, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, he's he definitely puts all into it. He's not just wearing like he did in the 80s. I just thought he was always wearing a Hawaiian shirt and mustache. I was like, he's just like a nerdy Magnum PI and <laughs> bring it back. Bring, it, bring back. it back. Maybe that's where I mean, there's a good chance that that's where I got my love of Hawaiian shirts. Yeah. Your Tommy Bahamas. Songs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that all adds up and the, the timing works together. So. Mm hmm. Well, I would say to wrap up that decade with him and uh, what, what were definitely your probably of, of the four albums or even just of the songs he put out, what would have been some of your favorites? Starting with Charlie. Hmm. Let's see. Hmm. Man, we just talked about so much. <laughs> I know. We pretty, we pretty much already named them mostly. Narrowing it, narrowing it down. So to were, the there, were there any that we, or were there any in there that we didn't uh, 
name check? Um, we didn't name check living in the fridge. That was a good one. <gasps> oh, I was just thinking living in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> that was a damn good, solid one. Mm. Yeah. Um, I have a good story. So I, I would say that Alapalooza is definitely our, maybe it's our age or whatever, but Alapalooza mm. is that's, the That's al- the right album, right? Yeah, it is the al- album of the 90s. Yeah. Um, I remember one time, the only time my dad ever took any interest really like, I mean, he would tell me music I was listening to was garbage or awful or whatever. <laughs> the, only, the only time he took any interest in it as like something like, I don't know if you should be listening to this. Like maybe I want to turn this off, you know, and, and not let you listen to it is he was misunderstanding. I don't know. Uh, it was young, dumb and ugly, which is an Al oh. original, which is supposedly supposed to be, according like to this, a, a parody of ACDC, but it doesn't sound anything like ACDC. No, it does sound like a hair metal-ish type thing, but more like yeah. Survivor or something. Not yeah, I, I was thinking ACDC. like maybe more like Ugly Kid Joe or something. Yeah. But maybe it's just because it says ugly in the title, but whatever. But it's got that like, meh, 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 you know, whatever. It's kind of like snotty. <laughs> but like, he's like, we, we wear black leather in the hottest weather. You can't imagine the smell. <laughs> right. And those, those are the lyrics. And, and I don't know what my dad got from it, but he thought it was like some, I don't know, like it was some rock song that was like, yeah, be bad. Like we are, be rebels. You it know, was... like he suddenly <laughs> weirdly got like weird interest in this song and, and, and was like, I don't know if I like it. My, my, my mom being like, Bill, this is a joke. <laughs> you know, my mom being like having to tell him she's like, it's a joke. It's it's not a serious song. Like they're making fun of yeah. people who take themselves too seriously like yeah. that. And, yeah. you know, and he was like, Wow, I could have fooled me or whatever, like walked away. You know? <laughs> That's funny. I remember uh it's sort of along the same lines. Like for some reason I had written out the the lyrics to another one rides the bus. And I had it down like just on my desk in, in my in my room at the time or whatever. My dad found it and he was like, My parents were like, Did you write this? And I was like, No. <laughs> no, 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 no. That was not me. <laughs> He's like, This is clever. You're not this, this is pretty good. Me. Are you this clever? I was like, Oh no, not yet. You wait. Just wait a couple of years. <laughs> a couple of years, yeah. It's coming. Um, but another one another another one from the nineties that we didn't mention uh was I can't watch this, which was the the MC Hammer. You can't touch this. Uh, yeah, is another good one. I can't watch this. He likes he, he likes to talk about food and he likes to talk about TV a lot. Yes, and I can identify with that all day long. I like the plumbing song because it's a mashup of the <laughs> Millie Vanilli, like blame it, the, blame our song it the, on, the, on the train. train. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, which one is that on? Uh... That's on uh, the the. Ben. The deep end, yeah. yeah Off the, the deep end. It's, it's funny I just because... I always call it the Nirvana one, yeah. So to, to look into it today, I was looking at some, like, I don't know, all music reviews or whatever. And as as far as critical reviews go, in quotations, um, Off the Deep End got the highest rating, and then, like, Alapalooza, Bad Hair Day, and Running With Scissors all got, like, twos and three-star ratings, you know? <laughs> and it's funny because uh, Off the Deep End was, like, you know, he he obviously he it was like a couple of years off before he came out with this one, um, but Alapalooza is all essentially it's stuff he wrote at the same time mm-hmm. as Off the Deep End, so it was essentially like B sides and things like that, right? Huh, interesting. Yeah. Nirvana was happy. Nirvana was happy with the parody. Yeah, no kidding. Big time. That's well, a great apparently parody. He charted really well in Canada whenever he released anything. Like I think maybe one of the reasons that convinced him to come up to Canada and really, <laughs> I got a good audience. I got a good fan base out fan, there. Yeah, I think he sold well, yeah, a significant can, amount of records in Canada. Over, that's probably also like the Canadian sense of humor, you know, like because this yeah. country is full of comedians as it is. I think we just like embrace that shit more. Maybe. Mm, yeah. Fair. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Um, I, for- I forgot about the achy breaky song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't get to get a chance to go back and listen to all of the stuff today, but uh, some of the stuff I heard, especially you, I, I, I definitely re-listened to "You Don't Love Me Anymore." That definitely holds up. Yeah, uh, um, it does. I listen to. Yeah, I just I hit I just hit random on a you know um, on a karaoke people always want to sing like at a medium pace by Adam Sandler or something like that. I'm like. I think I get a better reaction doing you don't love me anymore because it's not that popular. Like people don't really know about it. And then when they hear it, they're just like, what the fuck? Right. 
I'm like, it's a little more of a slow burn where they're yeah. just like, oh, okay. Because it starts off like, you know, yeah. like a serious song. Yeah. yeah. I guess Adam Sandler's does too, but just more people are aware of it. They've heard it enough times. Also, it gets really like crude, which I mean, I mean, I I'm not crude, if... so I don't care. But like, I get yeah. it that like all of a sudden is all of a sudden, if anybody's paying attention, they're like, wait, you, you, you did what? Like, <laughs> you dumped is me in a serious? drainage dish and left me for dead. Yeah. 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 But, yeah, thanks. I, I'm really happy you guys came on the show today to talk about Weird Al. And, I <laughs> I'm mean, excited to talk about wait, it. Wait, this yeah. isn't Learning to Listen? I thought we were on our show. We pretty much are. It's, it's, it's <laughs> We're everywhere. A crossover. So I want everybody to make sure that they do check out the L2L podcast. You can. Uh, I'll tell you later where you can find all that info. And thank you so much, Charlie and Quinn, for your time today. Yeah, thank my you. pleasure. Cheers. 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 Clinky, clinky. Clinky. Mm.